So hopefully we can end it off on this part. And in this part, we're going to also talk about the incurable wound that has been afflicted upon our people. So let's read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, abroad of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken Yahweh, they have spurned the Holy One of Yasharal and turned their backs on Him. Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured, your whole heart afflicted. So why does the Most High Yahweh says, why should you be beaten anymore? Well, well, it's simple because, you see, the enemy have beaten into the minds of our people that God is coming back and that, you know, every eye shall see the day that God comes from the sky. You see this? So, let's go ahead and read this here from dictionary.com. What it means when someone says, beat something into someone's head. Or, you know, rather say, what does it mean? Beat something into someone's head. So, it says here, to teach something persistently and rigorously. How often must I beat it into your head that dragons are dangerous? Which, you know, this is just an example of what it means, okay? So, in other words, you know, they have beat this lie into the minds of our people, right? Making them suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. Right, making them believe the lies of the enemy. So this is why the Most High Yahweh says, Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you continue to believe lies? You see, it does not matter how much you try to warn our people. It does not matter how much you try to cry out and, and, and well and lament and tell them that believing in another guy who died for your sins and who was coming back to bring you somewhere else is a lie. They just won't get it, no matter how many times you tell them that. Okay? So this is the reason why it says, why do you persist in rebellion? Well, let's read here. In Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 12. This is what Yahweh says. Your wound is incurable. Your injury beyond healing. You see that? Again, your injury beyond healing. Why do you think only one-third will be spared. They will be the ones who will be purified and made spotless. While the rest of the world is going to continue to believe lies. Why? Because their injury is beyond healing. Alright, Yahweh is the one who gives us healing. These people reject it. They want to continue to believe lies until they die. Alright? Look what it says here. There is no one to plead your cause. No remedy for your sore. No healing for you. Which goes hand in hand with Proverbs 29 and 1. Whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. You see that? The Most High Yahweh says that he tries to warn the people over and over. But after a while, after they have shown the Most High Yahweh that they refuse correction, they want to continue to follow in, the own, in their own evil ways. Well, the Most High Yahweh says that He will give them what their hearts desire. Alright? Isaiah 8 and 20 says, Consult the Most High's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land when they are famished they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Alright, just like it says here for you New Testament readers in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. So this is what's going on right now, okay? You see people people are waiting for something else they're not waiting for God you see that you know what it means to wait for Yahweh that means to wait for everything that he said comes to pass many other people are believing in a lie waiting for some guy to come some guy who they call God some guy who they say that is the only begotten son of God you see that 
And people are waiting for angels and UFOs to come and pick them up. So this is the reason why. This is the reason why. The Most High Yahweh says that these people, they're going to be the ones who will become enraged. Why? Because they trusted in lies. As we bring out many times. Proverbs 13 and 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. All right. Why do you think the Most High Yahweh is trying to warn the people, trying to make a way for all peoples? Isaiah 8 and 22. Then they will look towards the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will be thrust into utter darkness. You see that? The Most High Yahweh says that these people will become like dung on the floor with nobody to gather them. They're just going to continue to become enraged. They're going to kill themselves because of their anger, because of them putting, you know, hope in things that's not real. So they're going to be stressing themselves out, you know, waiting for men. This is why the Most High Yahweh wants us to rely on Him. Because when you put your hope in Yahweh, He does not fail you. And now we're going to read, sorry, this is Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10. Who among you fears Yahweh and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of Yahweh and rely on their God. See that? Rely on their God. Proverbs 12 and 5. The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked lie and wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous stands firm. A person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a warped mind is despised. Alright, so again, you know, many people may think that this scripture is talking about, you know, brothers like, talking about brothers like me, or, you know, sisters and brothers who believe in the Most High Yahweh. Many people may think that this scripture is talking about us. Who trust in Yahweh, us who believe in what Yahweh is revealing to us. But in reality, it's talking about them because, you know, this is the reason why this scripture is here. In Isaiah 66 and 24. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. Which we already know, the worms is talking about Jacob, the Yasharalites. The fire that burns them will not be quenched. What fire is that? That is the word of Yahweh. It's not my word like a fire. So it says, the fire that burns them will not be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. Why? Well, they did it to themselves. Okay? Honestly speaking. Proverbs 13 and 5. Honestly speaking, they did it to themselves. It says, The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. Furthermore, righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. So this is, you know, why we're going to continue and let's read now in Ecclesiastes 12 and 11. The words of the wise are like golds. They're collected sayings, like firmly embedded nails, given by one shepherd. Okay. It says, be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them, 
of making many books there is no end and much study worries the body why because you know what let's go ahead and read it. verse 13 says now all has been heard here is the conclusion of the matter fear the most high keep his commandments for this is the duty of all mankind that's the reason why it says be warned my son of anything in addition to them because ultimately it's a precept to it's a precept to Joshua 1 and 8 keep this book of the law always on your lips you see that meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then you will be prosperous and successful that's why the Most High Yahweh does not want us to depart to the left or to depart to the right, but to follow in His ways. Jeremiah 7 and 4. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, This is the temple of Yahweh, the temple of Yahweh, the temple of Yahweh. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. What are those deceptive words that are worthless? Well, it's talking about, you know, the words of the wicked. It's talking about these words here. In Isaiah 44 and 20, such a person feeds on ashes. A deluded heart misleads him. He cannot save himself or say, is not this thing in my right hand a lie? You see that? Yahweh is the one who takes hold of our right hand, all right? But these people, they trust in idols. This is why it says, is not this thing in my right hand a lie? You see that? The mark of the beast is a chip. No, the mark of the beast is an idol. Remember that. The mark of the beast is many things. The mark of the beast is anything that was created by men, right? Because the Most High Yahweh says that these people are considered to be the beasts of the field. They are considered to be ruthless nations that don't know any better. They trust in their own creations. So again, Jeremiah 7 and 8, but look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Proverbs 12 and 18, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. Psalms 64 and 3. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. To shoot from ambush at the innocent, they shoot suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see it? They plot injustice and say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the human mind and heart are cunning. But what it says here, but the Most High will shoot them with his arrows they will suddenly be struck down right but first you know the most high Yahweh said that our people got to get their minds right before he can use them to do that ezekiel 5 and 5 this is why Yahweh. sorry this is what the sovereign Yahweh says this is yarrow which i have set in the center of the nations with countries all around her which this is a precept to Micah chapter 4 verse 11. Yet in her wickedness she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws 
and has not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Yahweh says, You have been more unruly than the nations around you, and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Yahweh says, I myself am against you, Yerushalayim, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Micah chapter 3 verse 5 This is what Yahweh says, As for the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace if they have something to eat, but prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. Therefore night will come over you without visions and darkness without divination. The sun will set for the prophets and the day will go dark for them. The seers will be ashamed and the diviners disgraced. They will all cover their faces because there is no answer from the Most High. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the spirit of Yahweh, and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgressions, to Yasharal his sin. Hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Yasharal, who despise justice and distort all that is right, who build to Zion with bloodshed and Yerushalayim with wickedness. This is why we read in Zephaniah chapter 3, starting off at verse 1, about the judgment on Yerushalayim. Woe to the city of oppressors, rebellious, and defiled. She obeys no one. She accepts no correction. She does not trust in Yahweh. She does not draw near to her God. All right, but instead they rely on their sword. This is why we read the scripture here quickly. In Isaiah chapter 48 verse 1. Listen to this, you descendants of Jacob, you who are called by the name of Yasharal and come from the line of Yahweh, you who take oath in the name of Yahweh and invoke the Most High of Yasharal, but not in truth or righteousness. You who call yourselves citizens of the holy city and claim to rely on the Most High of Yasharal, Yahweh Almighty is his name. Never forget it. Okay? So again, Zephaniah 3 and 2, she obeys no one, she accepts no correction, she does not trust in Yahweh, she does not draw near to her God. Her officials within her are roaring lions, her rulers are evening wolves who leave nothing for the morning. Her prophets are unprincipled, they are treacherous people, her priests profane the sanctuary and do violence to the Lord. Yahweh within her is righteous. He does no wrong. Morning by morning, he dispenses his justice, and every new day he does not fail. Yet, the unrighteous know no shame. Again, your wound is incurable, beyond healing. Zechariah 2 and 12. Yahweh will inherit Yahweh the as his portion in the Holy Land, and will again choose Yahweh right? This is the whole plan. But check this out. Jeremiah 12 and 8 says, My inheritance has become to me like a lion in the forest. She roars at me. Therefore, I hate her. Isaiah 10 and 24. Therefore, this is why Yahweh, Yahweh Almighty says, My people who live in Tezaiwan, do not be afraid of the Assyrians who beat you with a rod and lift up a club against you as Egypt did. Very soon, my anger against you will end and my wrath will be directed to their slaughter. Why? Well, we'll read. In Ezekiel 33 and 26, You rely on your sword, you do detestable things, and each of you defiles his neighbor's wife, should you then possess the land. And with that, praise Yahweh.